Welcome to worship this morning. Um, just looked so terrible, right? Like just those kids didn't have any fun on that trip, right? Oh, I am so excited to hear more about that as we continue. But before we get there, we have some announcements. Um, in case you didn't see, our phones were down from Tuesday until Friday this week. Uh, we weren't sure what was going on, uh, but if you were trying to get a hold of us, we're sorry for the inconvenience. And if you still haven't had your uh, issue remedied, please get in touch with us. Let us know if there's something you still need. Um, we have a noisy offering today that is going to Lutheran Disaster Response. We have Women's Night Out that is happening tomorrow at the Sleepy Eye Golf Club. Uh, we've got a North Mankato water park trip on July 31st for go those going into grades 3 to 12. We've got a Foursquare tournament uh, August 5th. We've got a uh, lawn games, uh, not tournament, I guess. The adult ministry team is putting together some lawn games and a grill out on August 11th. Uh, we're looking for volunteers for confirmation and linked and everything in between as we gear up for another wonderful year of uh, confirmation and linked and Bible studies and everything else that the year entails. Uh, also, I have a trivia question for you. What color was Joseph's dream coat? Do you know? Yeah, it was red and yellow and green and brown and scarlet and black and ochre and peach and ruby and olive and violet and fawn and lilac and on and on and on. If you don't know that, I'm sorry, but that means you have to go to State Street Theater today uh, for their last performance of Joseph. I have to put that plug in because my wife's in it, and if I didn't, she would yell at me, so that's okay. Uh, but yeah, fun performance happening today at 2. We continue to pray for those on our prayer list, and to that we add Dave Schmidt. Uh, we pray for a speedy recovery from surgery for him. With all that said, I'd like to invite Lexi and Rory forward to talk about the ELCA Youth Gathering. Come on up, ladies. <laughs> New Orleans was such an incredible journey I had the opportunity to go on. I am filled with immense gratitude and excitement for having been able to experience it. I got to see New Orleans' rich and beautiful culture firsthand. We attended a live jazz show at Preservation Hall and even learned about different jazz musicians who shaped New Orleans' music to what it is today, such as Louis Armstrong and Sweet Emma. Our group also visited Mardi Gras World, where we learned about the history of Mardi Gras and how those beautiful and elaborate floats are made. We even made our own Mardi Gras masks with glitter. <laughs> View Orleans was another site we visited. We went up 34 floors and enjoyed a wonderful view of New Orleans. And don't even get me started on the food. <laughs> Our group dined at many different authentic New Orleans restaurants. The food was delicious. I tried many new dishes, such as gumbo and jambalaya from Mother's, beignets from Cafe Dumont, and bread pudding from Mulatti's. After each night, we attended the ELC gathering, where we listened to amazing music and even went down to the pit three nights in a row. There were many empowering speakers who shared their life's hardships and how God helped them through it. One of my personal favorites was Jacqueline Buss Bussey, who unexpectedly lost her husband and had to navigate life without him. She spoke about pulling herself up by her bootstraps and keeping an open mind or in any ways mentality, because there are many people out there who want to help you she emphasized the importance of always looking for signs from God. This was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, and I want to thank everyone who made it possible. I am, gra I am grateful 
to the congregation for their donations and anyone who fundraised for us. Thank you for putting in the time and effort for helping us youth experience this extraordinary opportunity. I'm not as prepared. I did not write something down. Congrats. I'm just going to wing it. Um, as Lexi said, we went to these amazing places, saw so many amazing things. I personally did not try as many foods. I'm a little nervous about that stuff. But I watched them eat alligator and frog legs, and their smiles were something else. Um, listening to all those speakers, some of them, you know, you're sitting there like, what are you talking about? You know, who, who are you trying to address right now? There was one that s sat with me, though. There was this deaf pastor and how she created her own church for deaf people, using her disability to help others find God. And that really stuck with me because it made me think of my brother. My brother was born without a foot. I'm sure most of you know that. But he has a really hard time with these things. And listening to her talk about how she used her disability to help others really stuck with me and made me think about him. Um, and Pastor Kathy brought us to so many places. She even got our bus driver, Dewey, awesome Dewey, <laughs> take us to a couple of places because it was so hot. And I... <laughs> Oh, the walks. Uh, like, you would just be walking down the street, sweating, and all of a sudden, you just get blasted by this cool air by some open shop, and you're sitting there like, how do you afford AC? <laughs> like, just blown out into the street. But it was really thankful for that. There was one point where we were, like, so hot and tired that we stopped in the store with a bunch of cool paintings, and they were like, you could just tell that there was a lot of work put in them, and we wouldn't have seen such a cool thing hadn't we been so hot and tired. Um, but I really wanted to thank everybody because it was such an amazing trip, and I know that I'm going to remember these things for a lot of years to come. Um, <laughs> I just really want to thank everyone because it was such an awesome trip. The food, the places, the views, the swamp boat tour we took. I got to hold a little baby gator named Bruce. He was awesome. You probably saw the pictures. Lexi got to hold him, too. Um, but it was overall just such an amazing trip, and we got to meet so many amazing people. We got to see so many things, and it was just awesome. And I want to thank you. If you donated five dollars, if you donated fifty dollars, all of it helped us go to this amazing trip, meet so many people, and it was just eye-opening for so many people. I don't know about others, but I, I specifically had a really good, amazing God moment on the last day. And had I not gone, I wouldn't have had that moment. And I just want to thank everybody who let me have that moment and got me there. Well, thank you for sharing your stories. And also, uh, I think we, uh, our chaperones who went and Pastor Kathy who organized it deserve a round of applause for all of the amazing work they did. Oh. That is just so awesome that it was 16,000-ish Lutherans getting together to explore their faith and learn about who they are in God's kingdom. That is just awesome. Well, with all that said, I invite you to stand as you're able and we'll join in our gathering hymn. worship God. Come, let us worship God. Welcome everyone to the love of God. Rest for the weary. Rest for the weary. Welcome everyone to the love of God. Food for the hungry, food for the hungry. Welcome everyone. 
to the love of God. Hope for the children. Hope for the children. Welcome everyone to the love of God. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbor. We'll take a moment for reflection. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned, we have hurt our community, we have squandered your blessings, we have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Amen. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We'll join in our Kyrie. Gracious God, you have placed within the hearts of all your children a longing for your word and a hunger for your truth. Grant that we may know your Son to be the true bread of heaven and share this bread with all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with our readings. The first reading for today is from 2 Kings, chapter 4, verses 42 to 44. A man came from Baal bringing food from the first fruits to Elijah, the man of God, 20 loaves of barley and fresh ears of grain in his sack. Elijah said, give it to the people and let them eat. But his servants said, how can I set this before a hundred people? So he repeated, Give it to the people and let them eat. For thus says the Lord, They shall eat and have some left. He set it before them, they ate and had some left, according to the word of the Lord. Word of God, word of life. The psalm for today is from Psalm 145, verses 10 to 18. We will read the psalm responsively. All your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your faithful ones shall bless you. They shall tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power, that all people may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom 
Your dominion endures throughout all ages. You, Lord, are faithful in all your words and loving in all your works. The Lord upholds all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. You are righteous in all your ways and loving in all your works. You are near to all who call upon you, to all who call upon you faithfully. The second reading for today is from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 to 21. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Word of God, word of life. Please stand as you are able for the gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel according to John chapter 6. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy food for these pe- bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. 
But he said to them, it is I, do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated, and kids, come on up. Well, good morning, everybody. Come on up. I'm so glad you're here. We're missing two. That's okay. That's okay. So we heard a lot of really great news in today's readings. There's a lot there. The one thing I wanted to talk about is that little boy who shared what he had. The little boy who shared five loaves and two fish so that everyone would have enough to eat. And so it made me think about what is it that each of us has to share? So what is it you think that you have to share, that you can share to help someone else? Anybody? What do you think you can share? Hmm. Well, you know what? Yesterday I was at Bible camp. Now some of you went to Bible camp, right? And I went to this big quilt auction there. Wow, you should have seen all the people that shared quilts. And then people bought the quilts, and you know what that money's for? It's so everyone can go to Bible camp and hear the good news of Jesus. So even people in this church, we had two quilts there that people from Our Savior shared, the women of the church, and then Tom, who gave a quilt on behalf of our church. So they shared their talent for sewing and quilting. And it helped others. So does that give you any ideas of what you maybe can share? Do you think you could share your hands and help people? Yeah, like maybe you can help at home. You're going to help. You've helped in the kitchen before, haven't you? Yeah, so you help serve donuts. And that brings joy to all these people. We have so many things we can share. And like that little boy, we're never too young to share what God has given us our time, maybe we share friendship and we share smiles, but God has given us all things that we can share to help others. So let's have a prayer together, okay? And you can repeat after me. Dear Lord, thank you for teaching us that you have given all of us enough to share. Amen. You may be seated. Thanks for coming up today. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So Jesus just wanted to get away. But you know, the crowds kept following him. They were excited to follow because they had seen Jesus perform signs. Jesus had healed an official son in John 4. He had healed the man by the pool in John 5. Very impressive signs. And so they follow. They follow him hoping to see another sign, hoping maybe for some healing in their own lives. And I'm not so sure that we're any different. We too want to see signs, don't we? We want to see signs and know that God is at work in our world, that God is active in our lives. So signs of Jesus. I saw a lot of signs of Jesus when we went to New Orleans for the ELCA Youth Gathering. I saw a sign of Jesus when our youth were so moved to compassion by the homeless on the streets in New Orleans that they wanted to hand them some money. And of course, we know, we're taught, that's not the best way to help the homeless is to give them money. The best thing you or the most you can maybe do is leave some food with them. And so some of our groups did just that. They had some food and they left it with some of the homeless. Signs of Jesus. I noticed that whether our youth came with a friend or not, and many of them came without a specific friend, wondering and worrying who am I going to be rooming with that week, But I saw after a couple of days how every one of our youth was embraced in a small group. Signs of Jesus. You know, we went to the World War II Museum. If you ever go to New Orleans and you like history, 
it's an amazing museum. But what was impressive is, you know, our youth are 14, 15, 16 years old, and they went to that World War II museum, and I saw their engagement there and how they were moved too by the sacrifices made for us by all of those folks in World War II. I saw the si a sign of Jesus in those hurricane kits. So hurricane kits were brought all over New Orleans with donations brought by all of us who attended the gathering. And a hurricane kit is a bucket, and it's filled with things like power banks, which is what we donated, first aid kits, batteries, wet ones, different things you would need in case of a hurricane, and you lose power for a few days. And those kits, hundreds and hundreds, went all over New Orleans. I saw Jesus in this too. I told our youth at the end of the week that I was just so very proud of them because I was. I was so proud of how they got along even when they had differences and they had to work out those differences and keep going throughout the week. I mean, that's a lot when you're with people 24-7. I was proud of them for figuring out how to deal with that each day. I was proud of how engaged they were at our mass gatherings every night with those 16,000 people and how they participated. They didn't just sit and watch and wait to be entertained. Our kids were actively participating and engaged in what they heard and saw and experienced. And then just to show you how much that was true, Every night, they wanted to be one of the first people down to the Smoothie King Center so they could get in there because they wanted to make sure they always had good seats because they knew if they had good seats down low, they would be more engaged than those people up in the nosebleeds. So we did. We did a lot of waiting in line. I was proud of how they watched out for each other. And sometimes that meant one of the youth in their group would come and tell an adult that somebody was struggling. And so then we as an adult could go help. You know, growing in faith, the things they heard at that mass gathering by the speakers on our accompaniment day, the interactive center, that's the main part of the trip, of course. But learning to work together, to get along with people 24-7, to grow together as a youth group, this is also part of it. And then to get to know another culture in another city, the food, the music, the people, youth from all over the country, this too is so important. Because you know that builds bridges. It helps us understand that our lives aren't just about us and what we like and what we want in our community or our state, but that there's a bigger world out there and we're all connected. And we built those bridges. So then really, even those things are too are about growing in our faith because those things are about learning to love your neighbor as God loves us. We grew in our understanding through all of the experiences we had of what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. So they gathered under this theme, which I think was so important and so motivating, created to be based on Psalm 139, that we are marvelously and wonderfully made. But we were created to be brave, authentic, free, disruptive disciples. Created to be brave, they learned. To show up with an open mind and an open heart, willing to be challenged and know that God is still teaching and God is still speaking to us today, that we don't have it all put together we are created to be authentic, to bring our whole selves each and every day and each and every place we go to know that we are so loved and created by God that who we are is a blessing to this world. We are created to be free, to be transformed by the good news, by the grace, love, and forgiveness of Jesus Christ and how that sets us free to be ourselves and to serve God. We are created to be free also to work for justice for all people. And that means that sometimes we are created to be disruptive because sometimes working for justice causes disruption. So I think about Martin Luther King Jr. in that sense. And I bring him up specifically because a lot of you don't know this, but in 1961, there was a big Lutheran youth gathering 
and Martin Luther King Jr. was one of our speakers. And just this week, Eldana Bry, who's sitting back there, told me she was a youth at that gathering and still remembers to this day hearing Martin Luther King Jr. speak. Think of the impact this gathering will have on our young people. And then we tied it up on the Saturday morning with closing worship with presiding Bishop Elizabeth Eaton. Created, we are created to be disciples of Jesus, sent into the world to love our neighbors as God has loved us. So back to that story about the signs of Jesus. These followers of Jesus were not disappointed that day either. They saw all of those people being fed by Jesus. And so Jesus sensed then they were going to come and take him by force and make him king. They wanted more of the same. They wanted their material needs met. They wanted more food, more wine, more healings. They wanted a new political regime. These were faithful people. And they could see that what Jesus was doing was from God. And so they thought Jesus was a prophet who would deliver them in the way that Moses delivered them from Egypt. But Jesus is a different kind of king. And while having our material needs met is important, and it is. That's why we have a food shelf and a food library. That's why we delivered hurricane kits. That's important. But Jesus came for something different, something more. Jesus has come to reveal that God is love. Remember John 16. For God so loved the world that he sent his only son. And that love is for all people, in all places, and all times. This may not have been what those early, earliest followers want. It might not be what we even want because we too can get really caught up in material possessions and control and power and think that's going to make us happy. But God knew this is what we needed. And so Jesus says no to being that kind of king, the kind of king that those followers wanted, and Jesus again withdraws. He says no to that kind of earthly power and control. So instead in these signs, these signs of Jesus in New Orleans and these signs we see in the gospel, Jesus came to fill something more than material needs. He came to fill our spiritual needs. You know, that hunger that we all have for meaning in our life, for purpose, that hunger we have for a sense of belonging, of being part of a community, that sense we have that deep need to be loved. That is why Jesus came. And in these signs in the gospel, we see how God chooses us and God offers us that very thing, that love, that belonging, that purpose, that meaning, an abundant life. Jesus shows us in these signs that God is feeding us with food that gives life. So, you know when you take a youth group on a long trip like we just had, you end up eating a lot of fast food for the matter of time and also for, you know, saving money. But while, after a while, everyone gets really tired of fast food and you really want something healthy, something that will really satisfy your hunger, like fruit or a salad or good protein or anything, because... Fast food, you know, does, just doesn't cut it on a daily basis. I think that's like our material possessions or some of the things we seek after in this world. We collect these things, but it's never enough, is it? It never completely satisfies us. So Jesus is offering us something that is different, something that's more fulfilling, and that's love, a love that chooses us a love that says there is room for everybody and that there is enough for everybody. And I think each time we experience that, like that God moment Rory had in New Orleans, well, that's a sign. That's a sign of Jesus. You see, when people were hungry, Jesus made sure they were fed, as we do here, both physically, though, and also spiritually. And we have that meal on Sundays as well. We have a meal of Holy Communion 
that fills us in a different way. Wherever the hungry are fed, be it physical food or this food, people are fed and filled, and that's a sign of Jesus. I like to picture Jesus on that mountainside with those 5,000 people and his arms outstretched, blessing the people, blessing that bread, feeding the 5,000. For in John's version, it is Jesus who feeds the 5,000, not the disciples. But Jesus with his arms outstretched, letting us know that I came for you. I chose you. Take this, take this bread of life and be filled in a way that nothing on earth can fill you. And the same as he walks across the water at the end of that gospel. His arms are outstretched, telling the disciples, do not be afraid. Because I think of all of the things that make us afraid in this world. And I mean, honestly, I think for our kids to sign up in these post-COVID years where we haven't done, you know, they haven't traveled as much. There were those years where no one could travel. That for them to sign up and be away from home for eight nights without their parents and sometimes without a best friend, I think that took courage, don't you? It took courage and trust. And that's what Jesus says, do not be afraid. That's what these signs point to. And the thing is, Jesus does keep showing up and giving us signs that tell us who he is and signs that give us hope in our world today. In the bread and the wine and the water, we see that sign over and over again that God chooses and loves us. But yet we can look around. I can spend a week in New Orleans with our youth, and you see there are signs everywhere. Because whenever we give of ourselves for the sake of another, for the sake of our neighbor, Jesus has shown up in ways that we can't imagine. And so all of those years later, we can remember something we saw and heard at a youth gathering in 1961 or in 2024. Jesus takes our little offering and blesses it and multiplies it, and the sick are healed, walls are torn down, the hungry are fed, bridges are built, and we are given that abundant life that is filled with love and purpose. Signs of Jesus. We can live with the expectation that Jesus is here, that Jesus is going to show up and do amazing things in us and through us, and sometimes in spite of us, because isn't that the good news? Isn't that the great news that we're like those followers? We do get things wrong. We mess up. We think the wrong things are going to fill us and make us happy. But there is Jesus with his arms outstretched, giving us what we need and saying, remember, I chose you. So I want to read something um, that our bus driver sent me. We had a, this wonderful bus driver, Dewey, as our youth said. And we had Dewey because Dewey has driven for our Girl Scouts here in New Alm for many years and knows Joan Krikova. And so Joan called Dewey and said, hey, you need to take the Our Saviors group to New Orleans. And so he said, Joan told me I should, so I did. And um, we had a great time with him. But here's what he texted me on Monday, the day after we got back. Thanks again, Kathy, for a great trip with amazing kids and amazing chaperones. Wish I could be there when you talk about it in church. He appreciates the tip we gave him, but then he said this, I always say, Jesus chooses me to be in charge of keeping his people safe. Isn't that beautiful? Jesus chooses Dewey to drive a bus, but Jesus chooses you too. Jesus chooses you to be brave, and authentic, and free, and disruptive, disciples of Jesus Christ. Jesus chooses you. Amen. Please stand as we sing our hymn of the day, Let Us Talents and Tongues Employ.
Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. One in the communion of the saints and with the powers of the Holy Spirit, we join our voices in prayer. We pray as we sing. Hear my cry, O God, listen to my prayer. God all around us, you show up in the miraculous, the phenomenal, and in the ordinary. Give us hearts and minds to know you and to love others. Jesus fulfills our needs and helps us through his love. Guide us to see signs of your abundant life. Feed us with something more fulfilling than the world can offer. Bread, wine, water, signs of your grace and love. We pray as we sing. God of field and forest, streams and seas, you are the fullness of all things. As grains of wheat grow upon the earth, and fish swim in the waters, sustain your creation, protecting harvest and every good person food in due season. We pray in this, uh, we pray as we sing. <laughs> God of healing, you open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. We remember any who are sick or suffering, families in our community who endure hunger, those who seek asylum, and our beloved for whom death is near. We pray especially for Rich, Audrey, Russ, Eloise, Dixie, Brad, Brian, Marilyn, Ken, Kevin, Lyndon, Mavis, Tracy, Carol, Vern, Sharon, jo uh, Gabrielle, Joanne, Marge, Jim, Don, Ron, Nancy, Dave, and all those that we lift up now out loud or in the silence of our hearts. We pray as we sing. Holy God, holy and merciful, into your outstretched arms we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now I invite you to turn to those around you and share a sign of Christ's peace.
please stand as they bring the offering forward. Let us pray. Merciful God, in your Son, Jesus, you show us the way of life. You teach us to love one another and to share the gifts of our lives. Receive these gifts, fruit of the earth and harvest of our labor, and lead us always by your wise guiding. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The meal is ready. Christ is the host. Come as you are. All are welcome. You may be seated.
Please stand for the communion blessing and prayer. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, you have fed us at your table and filled us with your presence. Strengthen us with your spirit that we might live as Christ's body in the world. Amen. Before we leave today, I just wanted to let you know we actually had three gifts to Green Lake to the big auction yesterday. We had our two quilts. We also had some diamond art given by Lois Shorn. But I did want to tell you that Tom's quilt that he gave in our name won the best in show at the quilt auction. And yeah. And it was the quilt that went for the highest amount. It went for $3,200. So all for Green Lake. So that's awesome. And then I, I have to just say some of these things too. Um, Ellie Wilker's here. She's going to be here at coffee. Her and Katie were at the Young Adult Gathering. We got to run into them a couple times. It was pretty awesome to see them down there, but she'll be here. If you have any questions about that Young Adult Gathering, hopefully it's something that grows. And then I also wanted to taste Simone. Simone, you know, spends the summers here, and this is her last Sunday with us till she goes back home to Florida. So Simone, we're going to miss you. Thank you for all your volunteering this summer. <laughs> So we receive the benediction now. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Let us sing our sending song. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.